Welcome back to the workshop. In this video, we've got some fun test cuts. We're gonna determine the difference between a sharp knife and a razor sharp knife. We sharpen five different knives. Well, all the same knife, but five different Wusthof knives, Kyle sharpened them, <laughs> to five different <laughs> levels of sharpness. And we measured it on the best tester or the edge on up testing system. They have five different scores. We're gonna take that to the real world and cut some fun mediums, balloons, pipe insulation, tomatoes, magazine paper, sponges. How sharp is a sharp knife and how sharp is a razor sharp knife? In a lot of our videos, we show a sharp knife by cutting paper. It's a pretty common method. All of these knives are sharp and should cut paper. This knife is the knife that is the most dull and it slices through paper, no problem. Kyle, you did a lot of the sharpening of these knives. How did you sharpen them so they achieved different levels of sharpness? Yeah, we wanted to give a couple of examples. So if you look back here on the board, we've got five knives. So number one and number two, we're sharpened on the KTS. Uh, number one at 25 degrees, and then number two at 20 degrees. Then we moved over to the precision adjust to give us that flat grind at 20 degrees. Um, and then we went down to 15 on the last two. Theoretically, the steeper the angle, the slicier it'll cut. So that's what we did for the last two. And so as you can see, these are average scores that we got on our best tester. So averaging out number one, the convex at 25 degrees, it's 385, 201, 392 on the precision adjust at 20 degrees, 167 at 15, and then 113. Kind of give you these average scores. And as you can see, that kind of translates into the sharpness of each knife in their current condition. Yeah, calling attention. So basically we guessed at which method would produce different sharpness results. The one that was a little bit of a wild card was sharpening on the precision adjust to 20 degrees. Mm -hmm. And Kyle, you sharpened that knife, but you sharpened straight from the 320 grit to the ceramic. And yep. that's basically it, no strop, nothing else. So we were intentionally leaving that a bit coarse. Yep. As you can see, that was actually the most dull knife. So it may have benefited from more sharpening. They're all sharp, that's for sure. The The difference being like, we jumped on this 20 degree from a coarse down all the way down to the ceramic. And that is typically kind of giving you that toothy edge, which is kind of what I expected to be a higher best score, but it's going to give you that toothy edge. So I'll be curious how it performs on, on these uh, mediums and stuff like that as we go through versus like say this what's supposed to be the sharpest in 113 we're going to find out together exactly what yeah how does this translate to exactly. the real world how what is sharp first up we're going to go through each knife and each test so we'll run all we'll we'll run all the knives through each test at a time and then we're going to give it a score from one to three one is a poor performance three is a strong performance or a super sharp demonstration of the knife and then we'll kind of see which one ends up being the sharpest overall this is pretty subjective. There's a lot of feel in here. So mm -hmm. either I will perform all the tests or Kyle will perform all the tests so that we have some consistency. But really, at this point, you gotta take our word for what we're seeing and feeling with the knives. Yep. So our first test is push cutting. I'm gonna set a piece of magazine paper. This is pretty thin magazine paper. I'm gonna set that here and I'm gonna drop the knife straight through. Starting with knife number one, which is the top of our chart. In theory, we thought it was the most dull. Pretty good. At the end, we had a little bit of a tear. Honestly, I'd give that one a two. Okay. Knife two. Woo. That was really clean all the way through. That's a three. Strong performance. Now this is the most dull knife we'll see. I'm gonna give it one more shot on a clean piece. Yeah, that's a one. Number four. Ooh. All right, we folded to the side a little bit there. I do want to give it a fair shake here. I do want to give it a fair shake, but I'm open to it. Similar. I think that's a. I think that's a four. We're losing out at the very end there. So what was the score on it? Oh, uh, I'd give that one a two, two in the is. middle. In theory, our sharpest knife. This one had an incredible score on the best tester. It did pull in under 100, which is relative to a double-edged razor blade. Yeah, that was that was by far the cleanest. That's a one, or excuse me, that's a three. Three.
All right, guys, so for the sponge cut, um, the idea here is to just do a push cut. Um, some of them probably won't be able to do a push cut, so if that happens, I'll start to drag and see how much drag is needed to get through the sponge, and then I'll rate them one through three. So uh, let's dive in. I've got knife number one here. Um, let's see what happens. Nope, just pushing in. Let's see if I can get a little drag on it. A little bit. All right, so I tried to really just make it to where downward pressure was doing it, but it definitely needed me to pull. I would probably just call that a one low score. Knife number two, let's get another corner here. Again, gonna have to pull a little bit here. I call that a one too. Still not great, didn't even get the bottom there. This is supposed to be our dullest knife, knife number three, here we go. Again, probably a one, but it actually performed a little bit better. I, you can kind of hear those teeth kind of chomping through that to where it probably cut the cleanest. Knife number four. Nope. Not bad, but again, there no, nothing's really just falling through the sponge necessarily, so. Another one? Yeah. All right, so knife number one, we'll see. Falls through. Or five, I mean. It's definitely sharper. Like it's actually pushing a bit. I'd give it a two. It's, it, it was better. <laughs> there was some just able to push through, but that's a tough test, I think, for any knife, really. All right guys, next test, we're gonna use some pipe insulation. This is a little more rigid than that big sponge, so I imagine we should be able to push cut with some of these. We'll just see how it goes. You're finding this out as we're finding it out. So uh, let's start with knife number one. Here we go. That went right through. I'd, I'd give that a three actually. That went right through. All right, knife number two. Three. <laughs> this could be the redemption for all these knives. Knife number three. Oop, that one needed some help. So as soon as I started to drag it, I'd give that a two. Knife number four. That's a three. three. Yeah, our sharpest knife. Three. That just fell through. You can definitely feel the difference even between our sharpest knives and that knife in particular, it just was like a razor through it, so. Uh, our next test is to drop some tomatoes Ooh. onto the blade and see if they split. In all reality, I'm pretty sure all of them will, but that's fun, so let's show you guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, obviously there could be some inconsistency because there's two sizes of tomatoes, but in theory, we're looking for clean cuts through the tomato, I'll do my best to be consistent, starting with knife number one. Woo. I think that was the fault of the large tomato. <laughs> A little bit of that girth. seems pretty clean. We'll give it one slice. That's pretty good on the slice, but uh, I have felt sharper knives, so I'll give that a two. Two. Second up. Easy peasy on the drop. Again, a two. I have felt sharper knives. Um, we're getting picky here. These are all sharp. Knife number three, again, relatively the most dull but no problem with the tomato. Let's see. Oh, that's in the stem. Too much pushing and that was, that was mashing it a little bit. Another two. There's no, it's not struggling here. It's just not falling through. 
All right, uh, number four. Just no problem again on the drop. What do we got here? Just another two. Another two. And finally, this, I mean, this knife already has such a leg up, or at least I've, every time we've cut with it, it just feels like it is indeed sharper. Like, did that just look cleaner? Yeah, it just went right through the stem too, man. It did, yeah, that was right <laughs> down the middle. Slicey. If I, it is slicey, so maybe I'm, maybe I'm being too picky on some of the, uh, on some of this, but. So you're gonna say two. I'm gonna say two. Okay. All right, our last, second to last test <laughs> is to cut through some paper towels. This is borderline impossible, although I have seen it done with crazy sharp knives, usually uh, like really tall flat grinds. We'll see how this works. No promises. Knife number one. No, uh, like a one or a, no. Great job tearing it. Yeah, it's tearing it. That's like a zero. <laughs> it does not cut. Call it a zero. It does not cut. Number two. No, that's also tearing. I'll give it one more shot. Ooh. There's like one little section in there that right has, the a, that has a flax. See, there's something. All right. So we got a one. A one. We got a one. The most dull, technically, knife number three. All right, surprise, surprise. Wow. That toothy edge I might had... be tearing through there. <laughs> Not the result I was expecting at all. We're getting somewhere. That's a that's a two. Uh, knife number four, very sharp, 167 average best score of three, but also more highly refined. Mm -hmm. And we're back to, we're back to ripping. Interesting. Yep, nothing. Uh, I would give that a, I'd give that back to the zero score. Wow. And finally, number one, the sharpest knife, at least so far. Controlled ripping, but not, not cutting. Hmm. So that toothy edge seems to have yeah. been the key to getting through this. Yeah, we're not. We do have, okay, I will give it. Similar to the one you gave one before, where it's kind of cutting. Yeah, we're getting a little bit, but it's not fair to, to give it any better than a one. Okay. All right, guys, this bonus round time. You've probably been seeing the balloons sitting here the whole time, wondering why they're here. We're gonna use this as a bonus round just to see how the knives perform against the balloons. I'm gonna do a drop test, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just drop the knife on the balloon and see if it pops, if they're still surviving the drop test. And then I'll pull similar, like we, similarly to the sponge. We'll see how it goes. So, uh, starting with number one. Number one. Here we go. We're gonna try a drop test. We're gonna dedicate the green balloon to the number one knife. It bounced right off. Oh. It's like, I'm gonna give it one more try, just because. Okay, that's not, that's not happening. All right. <laughs> now we'll go to, I'm just gonna put some pressure on the balloon and see what happens. Mm, nothing, a little more pressure, nope. Try slicing, there it went. Okay, so that one, I think I'll give a one. Yep. As, as the baseline. I feel not, like it would be fair, a three if it drops, a two if it's touching, yep. a one if it slices. Yeah, slices. that makes sense. Yeah. All right, red balloon for knife number two. All right, here we go. Everybody, everybody stay calm, here it comes. The drop test. Oof. Give it another, another drop, see? Oof. All right, that didn't work. Let's get to just a touch. Nothing, a little more pressure, nothing. Oh, there it went, again, same score. Same exact, almost thing happened there. 
All right, knife number three, drop test, yellow balloon. Here we go. Oof, man, just expect to hear that pop. Ugh, and it doesn't happen, okay. I expect that one because it has some teeth on it. Right, you'd think it'd like poke, but no. Let's see what happens on the, on the touch. That one actually was probably the worst. It, it actually drug a little bit before it popped. The other two, as soon as I moved them, they popped. Still one though? Yeah, one. Blade That'd number four. More challenging if they were too inflated. Right, then. they would have just popped immediately. Here we go. Ooh, ooh. I thought maybe it was gonna hit the corner, the heel of the knife there and hit that corner. Nope, all right. All right. Touch. Okay, slicing. That was wow. the worst one yet. Worst. Still based on our scientific scale, that's a one. Yep. The sharpest knife is not, not going right through. We'll see if the drop. Touch. Nope. Start to drag. Yeah, that one was like the other, the first ones in the category. It barely started to move and it popped, so. All right, Josh, so we've got our knives all laid out here. Um, and we're basically wanting to see what did we learn? What did we learn through all of this? Yeah, feels like we came out of this with like didn't learn a whole lot. Uh, the magazine push cut test on pa on you know folding paper push cutting there uh, definitely seemed to be the most revealing where there was the widest gap between yeah. knives. You could definitely tell like when you got to number five, that thing just you could hardly hear it. It just fell through. The yeah, paper. I think I'm curious if you guys will be able to hear that on camera. But basically, it was it was super smooth, mm -hmm. and other knives cut it. But there was there was a significant difference there. Um, toothiness mattered for some things. Surprisingly, for the paper towel, didn't see that one coming. I really thought that just yeah. super super razor sharp would have been better for the paper towel. But same here. I was interested. You know, we've we've seen a lot of activity, and personally, I know we've both been sharpening on the precision adjust a lot, and it gets really sharp. It's a flat grind uh, rather than a convex, and so it really comes down to, you know, convex at 20 degrees may have an effective edge angle closer to 23, 24, something like that, because it rounds in at the very end. Mm -hmm. It doesn't create a rounded edge. It just leaves more metal by the edge, a little more uh, edge retention. Yep. When you get a flat grind, it's just that super slicey yes. feeling. So I thought that that was automatically just going to be sharper by nature. Right. And it wasn't. No. I mean, we saw when we tested in the beginning that the, the KTS... Uh, the, the knife and tool sharper mark II had a similar performance to the if not a little bit better than the than the precision adjust yeah, i think that speaks a lot to that six thousand grit micro mesh belt i mean i was just barely yeah. bringing it across there just trying to i wanted it to compete with the precision adjust the the number five here so i really tried to make sure we gave it a leg up and i was really surprised at how well it did perform yeah the belt i think that's a great point the belt is about six thousand uh, 6,000 grit micro mesh. It's a really cool, a lot of technology in that belt actually compared to the 1,000 grit ceramic. Mm -hmm. So by nature, and it's like power stropping. So you can get really sharp, really fast. And we thought that it was kind of like, you know, the short cut version. And right. so it shouldn't be as sharp, but man, it was super sharp overall. Yeah. We, this, this knife scored 12 points total higher scores, better. Um, the, mm. I think it was the, uh, Oh, the second knife, yeah, that, that sharpened with the, the KTS Mark II. Just behind it. Was right behind it with 11 points. Everything else was tied at nine. Some of them actually performed the exact same. Obviously, this is an extremely scientific test, so <laughs> there's no room for error. But we did learn some stuff, man. Like, I was really impressed with how you took number four and number five. Exactly, exact same thing, only Josh stropped number five. And that's what got it to that, like, below 100. So that shows you just how much stropping affects the mm -hmm. edge of a knife in a way that really takes it to that next level sharp. So mm -hmm. that was cool to see and how it performed as well. So if you guys want to see more stuff like this, let us know in the comments. Uh, we, we love doing it. Uh, we can get more specific if you'd like, we can keep it loose and have some fun with it, but this is just the kind of thing we thought would be mix it up for you guys. If you want to see more of it, make sure you let us know down in the comments, ask some questions about how we put this together, whatever you want to know, we're happy to talk to you about. So. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week. Thanks for watching. As always, we hope you learned something. Leave us a like if you did. We'll see you next week.